everybody welcome to delta flodge outdoors today is sunday october 13th when i'm recording this one it will come out tuesday the 15th i hope y'all started y'all steer season off with a you know bang but I guess it wouldn't be a bang because there's no some of you are actually rifle hunting by this point um some of you are still bow hunting i'm still bow hunting hope y'all had a good start to it i'm gonna dive into just how ours has started this year i've um, made a few hunts like i said i made the first week and um North Louisiana with my buddies. So we hunted that. We actually hunted Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Packed up Friday and came home. I hunted Friday evening here at my place in Oklahoma and saw a doe. Um, filmed her. Didn't take a shot. She was too small. Then um, Saturday, didn't hunt because uh, we had football Saturday evening and everything, and the wind wasn't right Saturday morning for my place. Then uh, I hunted that Sunday evening. Put my wife's dog decided at like 6.15, 6.30. She's got two great Pyrenees, and I say they're hers because I was like, I, they're just not mine, they're hers. I have horses, she has dogs and goats. Um, but I will say this about Woody, that's the name of her big male Pyrenees. Uh, our little girl named her when she was like two and a half, three. She's four now. But um, if I'm ever lost anywhere, all they got to do is like load Buddy up, I mean Woody up, and uh, turn him loose. Wherever my truck's at, he'll find me from there. And the dude literally came in, walked the exact trail I walked in, come there, looked around, sniffing, walks there and lays down under the tree that I'm in in my saddle and just starts chilling. It was like 6.30, so I was like, there's no sense in staying here right now because he's going to have this one screwed up for me. So I went out. That was Sunday evening. And then uh, I went to work Monday, got to work. Two, like 200 miles from home, realized I left my suitcase at home, so I had to drive back home Monday night to get my clothes. So I didn't hunt Monday evening, I hunted Tuesday evening, and um, had three does come out right at the end of like legal shooting, and at the time they worked their way to me, it was too dark to get a shot, couldn't see my pins on my bow, and it was a couple of minutes after legal shooting, so I wouldn't have took the shot anyway. But um, I... Um, planned on Wednesday I had stuff to do I couldn't hunt so Thursday I was going to move down that say 250 yards farther down and hunt that area again because like I said I'd saw the does and I'm just trying to shoot an early season doe uh, right now so figured I'd set back up on them as I pulled in went to, I pulled in from the left side to go into that parking area and a guy pulled in right in front of me from the right side and he was going he, I was like hey which side are you going in on He's like, well, I'm going here, I'm going to this corner. And I was like, shit. <sighs> Which was basically the area I was going to hunt. The wind wasn't right for it, but I don't always use the wind. There's some techniques I use for cover scent that works for me. Wouldn't recommend it for everybody. And um, so, I was, he, so I was like, he went too far down. He was going about 500 yards and um, down past where five to probably five to six hundred yards past where I went uh the day before and that's not where the deer came from so I was like okay cool and I could have went where he went left and went in there to that corner I could have went to the right side and across because it's a cut ag field and set up on the other side because I've seen deer there too but I was like I'm not gonna do that I just I said I'll go to another spot and I hit him excuse me can't quit yelling <sighs> I hit a backup spot that I have some that I've scouted and seen deer in. And uh, just to go into the wind thing, the wind was perfect blowing from across the where the deer always come from towards the road. I walk in from the road. I'm in a dried pond bed um, 300 yards off of a dirt, dirt road set up in a little channel. And I'm literally like in a chair in the weeds not a real good setup but it's all I can set up there so deer every day I've seen them I've watched them for a while they come straight it's usually a group of five to eight does they come straight in from the side I'd be looking at my road to the my back to the road looking out across the like CRP grass well about 6 15 6 6 15 three does come in on the same damn trail I walked in on from the road I don't know how, why, where. Like, I don't know if they just, if they crossed the road there and, or what they did. 
They wasn't worried, and my scent was blowing straight to their nose. They wasn't worried about me. The problem was, the two little ones were, you know, okay size. Then they had a good doe. Doe was probably the mama doe, and the, the two yearlings were, you know, small. I didn't want, intend on shooting one of them, but they were like 80 to 90 pounds, maybe 100. The mama was a good size, one, you know, 130 to 150. She was my intentions, but the little ones just kept coming, and before, and like waiting to get her and clear to shoot, one of the little ones got to within like 11 yards of me. You got me sitting there in a chair with a camera on a tripod and everything else, and she realized something wasn't right, and that stopped the big doe, and they, and they didn't run off. They just turned and went back the way they came from. And um, so... But in two still, it's two hunts on public land this year. I hunted, like I said, in Oklahoma, I've seen six head of deer that were all within bow range. So, and that's with the hot weather. The weather changes tomorrow drastically, you know, for most of these places. You're talking about 10 to, well, 15 and 20 degree change. So hopefully tomorrow evening, it has them up and going pretty decent. I just haven't decided if I'm gonna hunt one of the two spots I've already hunted, I go to the spot that I right now I have a camera there soaking. I haven't checked it, but I do know because I've I've glassed a bunch of bucks on the back side of that area. Two weeks ago, I glassed a batch group of like eight bucks together still that were all eight point or better. Um, I, I would say every one of them were Pope and Young or better, uh, possibly one Booner in it. This is glassing them at, you know, seven, eight hundred yards. So I, I could be off a little bit with saying one's a booner, but if he's not, he doesn't miss it by much. Uh, the rest are the 125 to like 140 class. Nothing to be upset about. So I'm a, I may set up because I know an area they come through that they start, you know, when the, their winter pattern puts them right through this funnel. I may go hunt that tomorrow evening after work excuse me I'm so sorry I haven't fully decided I know I'm gonna make a hunt try to make a hunt here this evening at my house and um because we should have some decent deer activity because temperatures move start shouldn't get crazy hot today it start like I said it's kind of starting tomorrow's gonna be better and that's um you know that's my plan for the, I'm going to hunt Monday and Tuesday evening after work. Wednesday, I won't hunt. Thursday, I'll make a hunt. Then Friday, I'll be home. Saturday's youth weekend here. So, uh, try and put my youngest son on a deer. We got their, their feeder and box blind have, um, several does coming to it in daylight. And they got a little scrub buck that we got pictures of. I need to see him in person to see if it's the, how young he is or what he is because, I mean, he's his rack's not what it should be for compared to the rest of the deer around here. So I don't know if he's, you know, I, I want to look at him in person before I make the decision, but more than likely it, he's going to be a target buck for my 10-year-old. Um, so that So we'll go from there. Super excited about that coming up this weekend. Hoping to uh, put him on another deer. He killed, like I said, he's killed one. That was uh, year, December 23rd of 2022. So he didn't shoot anything last year. Not from lack of opportunity. He just, uh, he passed up some opportunities looking for something else. And, you know, like there was a little spike that came in that literally came within 20 feet of us. And he had the gun up on a tripod and like sitting there and had the crosshairs on him. And he elected not to shoot them. Um, as a nine-year-old, even though he knows there's better bucks around here and everything, I was impressed because I don't know if I could have did that as a nine-year-old, even if I knew there was better bucks. I think I probably shot my deer and been happy. Um, so that's a rundown of what we got this week. I've actually uh, got to schedule the time with a guy I think is going to be a great podcast. We'll probably try to record one day next week then put it on and it's gonna be probably a bunch of controversial shit with it so it should be really cool he's got some pretty you know out there theories and views and everything and i want to get them on and 
get get some opinions of stuff. I think it'll be fun. Um, got a, guy, a couple guys I need to reach out to. We've all been bouncing back and forth with it with it deer season, and, and all of us hunt. It's and not only do we all hunt, we all work full time jobs. It's it's hard to schedule something. So some of the people who start falling in after deer season. I know that's three, four months out, but that's what we got. Um, um, let's see, last night was my son's last, my youngest son's last regular season football game of the year. He's played corner, cornerback all year. He's played really well. Last night, uh, I'd already told him because I I, I, I I knew about the other team. They passed the ball a bunch, and I was like, dude, they got some fast receivers, you know, crowd them the line jam him throw his timing off if not you're going to get torched first two three first two drives three three to four you know plays he he jammed the receiver did great well they ran the ball all but like two of those times so you know they drove the field each team drove and scored each drive so third drive for that team so you're looking at he's been in about 12 to 12 to 15 defensive snaps you know between the two drives starting the third drive and he had jammed the receiver, but he had got where he was starting to look inside and it backed off from the jam so he could get away from the receiver to try to stop the run. And uh, sure enough, they snap the ball. Quarterback rolls out that way like he's going to run because he had tucked the ball and ran a couple of times like that. And my son bit, and the receiver was on a go route. And 40 yards later, he was standing in the end zone by himself. And uh, – it's the first time he's got beat all year, and it was a bad beat. It was a bad read all the way around. He come to the sideline, and because uh, that gave the other team the lead, and um, he came to the sideline, and the defensive coach stopped him. And uh, I will say this, you know, he he, he kind of tried to coach him up because like I knew what was I knew what was going on for my son ever made the sideline like because he he tried he when he turned to run when he realized what happened the ball was in there and he broke to run. He ran, you know, he knew he couldn't run the kid down, but he ran all the way to the end zone. Everybody, the other team's celebrating. His team's trotting off the field, and he's just standing in the end zone, like with this, you know, like, defeated look on his whole body. And he walks off, and when he got to the sidelines, his coach trying to coach him up. I hopped over the little rail, went over there, and called him to me because he was crying. And, um, you know, because it was, they're playing for the number one spot in their division and a bye in the playoffs. And he just gave up the lead. You know, gets part, and it was a bad beat. And you know, that's what I told him. I was like, "Look, dude, you know, we talked about it on the way to school, on the way to the game. I talked to you before the game. I told you know, like you've been playing this style all year, where you're jamming them, disrupting everything. You you tried to play a different. You tried to play different. You tried to back up so you could get it in on helping stop the run. You know, I get that, but your job is to make sure that receiver doesn't." do what he just did you and um so he played two more drives and they you know they got the lead back and then they uh, my son's team did then they stopped him on the next drive and i think and then they stopped him right for the halftime drive and they got um uh, and he was limping pretty good his knee was he had hurt his knee on a solo tackle the following drive after he gave up a touchdown and um Second half, he played a couple. He played kickoff a couple times and like one or two defensive snaps. But um, I will say this for the other team: the the, the wide receiver that torched my son. Uh, to be a sixth grade kid, he's pretty pretty special. Talking like one hand catches and outrunning everybody. He uh, they targeted this kid like 13 times. He caught eight passes for like four touchdowns. Um, it ended up in overtime. My son's team won in overtime, so they got the number one spot. They get a buy in the playoffs, but more than likely, the team they play last night is the team they play again. So my son learned a level, learned hu- humility and perseverance last night, and you know it's a good learning lesson for him. Uh, I hated it for him because like I know what it's like to be on that end to think you just completely fucked up so bad that. You let your whole team down. But I'll say this. The group of kids was like, you know, he's got a good, good team. They were rallied around him, you know, especially when he made a good play on the next drive. Like, they 
And I guess I'm going to relay that into you, you, you make screw-ups in life. Like, you know, he, he misread something. So we can go that, with that with deer hunting. You, you know, you misread something and cost yourself a chance, a, a buck of a lifetime. Don't get so down on yourself that it completely destroys, like, the rest of your season. You know, scrap that one, start over. And that's what I told him. I said, to be a good DB, you have to forget what happened the very first, the very play before that. Every play is a new play. Like, whatever happened doesn't matter. Win or lose, you're on your – win or lose from that, it didn't matter. You have to go to the next play. Whether you won that battle or lost it, the next play is a new play. And that's how hunting is. Win or lose, the next the next day's the next hunt's a new hunt. You move around from there and make it happen. And I know that kind of went on a weird roundabout to get there. And I was just speaking from the heart because it was like probably one of the I didn't you know like it was rough to see my son get beat. Then to know what, he knew why he got beat as soon as he did it. Like he's standing in the end zone. And he's looking at me, and I think I felt what I felt for it was he know like he's looking at me because he knows what I've taught him and preached to him. He did the wrong thing, and it cost him. And I think he he was he wasn't worried about upsetting his team or disappointing them. He he thought he let me down, and that's what I told him. I was like, no, dude, you're you're ten. You're playing in sixth grade. You're starting. You've only been playing. The six, this is your sixth game this year, and you were back up last year, and you'd never played before that. Like, you you know, I'm I'm super impressed by you. Like, your drive, your determination. Just, you know, so I don't know. It's kind of it's weird for me to talk about this, like, and kind of feel. I don't know. Like, love the shit out of my kids. And I never want them to think they disappoint me like that. And that, that was a – that was – I learned a lot from that last night. And I don't know. I think I'm going to start wrapping this one up. Huggy kids tight, man. You t- slightest little thing can influence them. Get them in the outdoors, fishing, hunting. Fuck, I don't care, bird watching and hiking. Get some Mother Nature in them. Get get them, get them out there. You you don't know what it mean to them, you know. It's like he's, you know, banging and bruised up today, knees hobbling and everything. He's up this morning. Hey, we need to do this to the box in or anything for us. And I'm like, dudes, just no. Like, you're good. You know, and it's like my oldest one does. I know I talk about my youngest one a lot. My youngest son, my oldest son doesn't play. Uh, football, but you know he and he's not the big. He's not the a hunter. He'll fish, but you know it's like having them both in the outdoors. But it's like you know at the si- same time saying he's not a big fo- football player, or sports player. Yesterday morning, my two sons were like, my youngest son's like, hey dad, this team passed us a lot. I know I need that we're gonna play. I know I need to work on some stuff. Can you come be quarterback? The older brother that hates sports spent 30 minutes out there with his little brother yesterday running routes so his little brother could work on coverage. And, um, you know, just they, – and they, they, they argue and will <laughs> fist fight to the point of drawing blood, and they're 10 and 12. You have to keep them separated. It's horrible. But at the same time, they, they will do that to each other, but nobody else is going to – do it but they will do their best to help each other be better when it comes down to it and may and you know same thing with their little sister the three of them together like that it's like they bicker but they have each other's backs and you know you talk about leaving something behind in life it's a legacy you want to leave behind and I guess what I would want is to know that my three kids are going to be there for each other no matter who else or what else they have each other's backs, even if everybody else thinks they're crazy and they don't, and they don't like, you know, they don't get along, they don't like each other, and they fight like animals. But at the end of the day, they're there for each other, and that's what matters. And um, you know, 
it's sort of like comparing like the bow hunter, the compound bow, the, like the compound, the traditional, and the uh, um, crossbow guy. When you put the three of them together, like how they're all gonna argue with each other, like take each other. They think one's better than the other, but at the end of the day, they're the same and they know it, you know per se. And they're gonna they're gonna defend what's right. So I don't know. I know it went on a weird tangent. Um, thank y'all. I thank y'all for listening. Thank y'all for subscribing. I enjoy this a lot. I hope y'all do too. Like I said, you know, we were making some changes. I've been trying to talk my wife to come out here and doing one with me. Um, from her point of view of some of the insane shit I do when it comes to hunting and some of the uh, just weird things I do compared to other people. Um, thank y'all. Julius Craig, Dr. Fly Job.